Thanks everybody for joining us today. Uh, you're here with Sales Intel and PFL. Uh, we're gonna be talking about how to use old school marketing and new age automation to increase engagement. Uh, you have with you today, I'm Jason Hubbard. I'm Vice President of Growth at Sales Intel. And we have uh, Jason Yarborough from PFL today. Jason, welcome. Hey, thanks, man. Excited to be here for the Jason and Jason show. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, so yeah, we're really excited to have uh, Jason and uh, PFL here with us. Uh, you know, at Sales Intel, uh, we work at providing you the data that you need to be able to reach out to uh, your contacts at your key accounts. Uh, and PFL has been leading the charge in sort of resurrecting some of the, the old school marketing tactics, uh, including sending direct mail. Um, so it's a really interesting, you know, merger of, of data and practices and processes uh, within the context of sort of how things have been moving. Uh, Jason, you want to talk real quickly about the, uh, the report? Sure, I'd love to. So we teamed up with Demand Metric and ran a survey a few months back, I guess it was last summer, uh, to a bunch of marketers to see how, you know, marketers as a whole are using the, you know, how, the term multi-channel marketing, how marketers are using multi-channel marketing and to analyze the indicators that are uh, really signaling the higher overall performance of those channels, right? So what we found, you know, long story short with that report is that th there was a lot of statistical proof that tactile marketing produces results, right? And this is a, it's a pretty lengthy and detailed report. I think we're planning on sending a link out to download to everyone following the webinar. And we'll get in, into a lot of those, some of those numbers here webinar but one of the biggest we've found is that 80 percent of the participants in this report uh reported that direct mail improves their multi-channel campaign performances and you know that 80 percent is a big number to, to show improvement so looking forward to diving into some of this and shooting this out to everyone following the webinar yeah absolutely we will include a link to that in the uh in the follow-up as well as on the page that's going to have the uh the deck and the recording uh, embedded on it so lots of ways for you guys to be able to get that and access it all right, so agenda today. Uh, we're gonna talk about how uh, modern marketing's led to the reemergence of direct mail. So there's been a lot of trends that have happened recently, uh, you know, in particular the last five to 10 years uh, that have really shifted how marketing's working. Uh, we're gonna talk about how 75% of consumers act on a brand's direct mail piece immediately, uh, how to effectively use direct mail with marketing automation, um, how data is the linchpin to making all of this work, uh, and then hopefully we'll have a little bit of time for Jason and I to, to share some of our uh, direct marketing stories, both, both wins and, uh, and epic fails that we've had on that, and, you know, a few minutes for Q&A towards the end. Uh, sure. So lots, lots to cover. Uh, we'll jump right into it. Uh, so how did we get here? Um, so what's really happened over the last five to 10 years, uh, you know, which happens to coincide with uh, most of my experience in the B2B space, uh, I've really seen this hand, you know, firsthand. You've seen the democratization of a lot of technologies that, that you know, 10 years ago were basically only for the enterprise. Uh, in particular, uh, marketing automation, uh, email marketing, uh, email service providers have really proliferated over that time. Uh, you've also had the emergence of sales automation, sales enablement platforms to so think outreach, sales loft, uh, as well as lots of dialing platforms. Um, you know, dialing platforms were almost entirely enterprise 10 years ago. Marketing automation was almost entirely enterprise 10 years ago. Uh, sales loft outreach didn't exist 10 years ago. Um, and so what's happened as you've pushed that out into, you know, more and more of the space uh, to the point where, you know, marketing automation, uh, sales enablement have become such a standard part of most people's tech stack. It's right there with CRM as an expected piece of the tech stack these days. Um, and what's happened as you've done that is it's made it easier and easier for us to be able to do things at scale. Um, you know, both being able to do it at mass volume and automate it. So, you know, think email, think what's happened to your inbox over the last 10 years. Think about the ability for us to be able to send, you know, large scale automated targeted email messages. Uh, you know, think about all that's gone on with dialing platforms all the way to the point where, you know, it's gotten so out of hand that you actually have legislation that's being passed to try and curtail and, and manage some of that. 
Um, and so the end result of that is it's, it's become harder and harder to break through all of the noise. Um, so the emerging channels that we're sort of able to, to just handle or be able to maximize just out of sheer volume, um, you know, we've, we've sort of shot ourselves in the foot when it comes to that. And so uh, it sort of moved everybody back to old school marketing. Um, so, you know, content is king, targeting is, uh, is of the essence. Uh, making sure that you're hitting the right people at the right time. Also making sure that your data is accurate as humanly possible because, you know, Google and company who are the gatekeepers and all of this have become really, really unforgiving. So if you send an email blast that has a span crap or gets, you know, high bounce rates or something like that, you can kill your entire domain and your ability to be able to send email campaigns at all. Um, and all of that goes hand in hand with uh, the emergence of direct mail. Um, you know, that, that used to be one of the primary channels and mechanisms, and then that sort of got pushed to the side. Um, now that we've sort of maxed out all of those other channels, you're starting to see direct mail come back into it. So that's where we're really excited to have Jason with us to, to talk through all of that. Yeah, super excited to be here. And you, you really set that up for me just, just perfectly, right? You said a few things that are really key. and. You know, it's, it's that old school marketing and with the technology, it's kind of put us in a new school in a way to do it. You know, kind of the, the old adage of, you know, what's, what was once old is, is now new again. And, <laughs> right, and it's, that's, that reason is because, you know, of, of us marketers and what you just mentioned. <laughs> and so we, we, I was going to say, talk, talk to us about how does that fit into an overall multi-channel strategy? Sure. So the, uh, it's great what you see here. This is part of our report that I just mentioned. And, you know, you look at direct mail and how it fits into our overall marketing strategy and all the things that we have going on now. I love that you mentioned that there's platforms for platforms now, you know, and you look at all these things, you're probably touching, you know, four to, to eight of these things, right? So we've got events being still the most effective way of somebody in a place space, doesn't matter what it is, right? All the way down to, to your SEO and social media type situations. But what we found is that direct mail is the second, you know, most overall effective channel in your multi-channel campaign, right? So that multi-channel campaign, what we found within those channels, is that those that are running four or more channels are actually more effective than those that run less than four, right? Because it gives you those more touch points. That's pretty easy math. Give the more touch points you have, the more effective you're going to be. So when you're running those emails, you're running those digital ads, and you're running those direct mail pieces as well as phone calls, and those all are orchestrated together in that multi-channel campaign, meaning, meaning what happens on one channel directly reflects what happens on the next, right? They fill out a form. Like you send an email out, they get put into this nurture campaign, right? They don't respond to an email, a direct mail piece triggers out. A direct mail piece hits their desk. And the reason the direct mail thing was working great right now uh, is because of what you said earlier, Jason, is that, you know, what, what the tools we're using to make things easier isn't always better. And if you take a look at your inbox, like you stated, it's, it's completely full. I've got programs that hide your emails from if you're trying to sell me something. <laughs> right. But if I put a FedEx box on your desk, we always joke here at PFL that a FedEx box has a hundred percent open rate. <laughs> you think about it. When was the last time you, you, you put a FedEx box in the trash or just ignored it and walked away from it. Curiosity, <laughs> curiosity gets the best of all of us. I ordered a package off Amazon on Wednesday. It'll be on my doorstep tomorrow and I'm going to get home and be like, Ooh, what's in the box? Because I'm, I'm naturally curious people of what's in the box. Right? So that's the reason we're seeing this, this channel being so effective. And what this is stating here is that generic direct mail along performs among the least effective, right? So if you see, there's two different direct mail pieces They're just doing direct mail alone, it works but it's at least effective at reaching target audiences. However, when that direct mail is branded, it's personalized and integrated with your multi-channel campaign technology, it moves to the second most effective channel with the 78% effective rate. So in the PFL segment that you see here, this 32% number, it was, more, it was, was reporting that direct mail produces moderate to major improvement in overall channel, multi-channel campaign performance, right? So 65% compared to 49%. That's, that's, that's a, that's a Big increase, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go with those numbers all day long, right? <laughs> Especially when people are seeing like, you know, 1% of emails are, are open or viewed and, you know, maybe 10% of those open rates are, are taken action upon, right? When, we, when we're getting 100% open rate and something along the lines of like a 40% response rate, those are good numbers with your marketing campaign. And that's what makes this channel so effective right now. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we did just a few months ago a uh, webinar with Ben Grasso. We were talking about uh, some studies that, that we had worked on. 
uh, where if you if you employ a multi-channel campaign or approach to your marketing efforts uh, and you have four or more channels, uh, you get a 400% increase in engagement. Um, so, you know, just another highlight yeah. of how important it is to have a uh, multi-channel approach to it. I'll take those numbers all day long as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's really good numbers, by the way. Cool. Uh, so yeah, talk to us a little bit about how you tie this in with marketing automation. I mean, I think, you know, one of the things you mentioned in the, the previous slide is really key to it is, uh, yeah, and it goes hand in hand with what I talked about, sort of going, going back to old school. Uh, content is king. Targeting is essential. So making sure you've got the right content that you're getting in front of the right people, you're personalizing it. And you, know, you saw that with the stats that you pointed out as far as, uh, you know, you have know, non-targeted, non-personalized uh, direct mail versus, you know, doing that. Right. Yeah. I mean, what's, what's, what's old might be new again, but as in, we said earlier, you're just doing direct mail. That's kind of easy. Just putting chach in a box and send it out, you know, what we call batch and blast. That's kind of easier. But these days we're in a new school of marketing using old school tactics. And we've got all these new tools and technology available to us. And there's a lot of work that, that, that requires a lot of resources. And you know, it's an investment to get set up and, and to direct mail these days in this new technology scene that we're in, all this marketing automation, right? It, it really, at the core of what we do and how to do it well, it starts at this very first point of what you know you guys are diving into with your data for key contacts and key accounts. But if you can't harness the power of your data, you know I, I always make the joke that it's kind of like setting up a dating profile and putting the wrong data in and continually getting matched up with the wrong person, right? So if you're not in, if you're not harnessing the power of your data, having accurate data, verified data, then you're sending this stuff to just the wrong wrong person every single time. It's just going to be a fail. You're going to, you're going to get products sent back and that's real money that's coming back, you know, especially with a company like PFL and you're, you know, sending these pieces out and then they come back and you're paying that to come closer and all these. So it's, it's vitally important to your direct mail campaigns to harness the power of your data. Yeah. And I mean, now, it, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously there, there's real costs involved with direct mail, but there's also indirect costs that that's really hard for you to measure. Uh, in particular, the, you know, the ding to your reputation, you don't want to look like you don't know what you're doing. Um, and so that can, right. that can cause big problems on that side and there's a hidden cost to it. Yeah. And then I, there's a couple of, you know, of those fails that I can reference later, how that makes you look and how that happens and what we've seen, but, you know, without using and that all results as as a of bad data, right? And the second piece that that it requires these days is your orchestration. Like we talked about, you know, the multi-channel strategy now. But when your channels are working in harmony, like I said, what happens on one channel directly reflects what happens on the next. That's when you that's when you've got something beautiful working and, and coordinating in the backgrounds, right? Because we're talking about real costs as well. Like when these things go out, it's a real cost. But if you're if you've got these channels orchestrated, let's say you send an email out, I reply to the email, we get a call set up. It, from that point on, there's no reason for me to enter into a direct mail campaign, right? Because we've got these multi-channel triggers set up within Marketo, Salesforce, Oracle, whatever we're using. And it knows that once a response has taken place, direct mail does not have to go out. No response, send direct mail out. Good orchestration, and that, which leads into integration. You know, we're now able to make direct mail sends effortless. We just brought on my, my wife works for a big financial company. We just brought them on as a, as a customer. They were doing a ton of direct mail a month, but they were doing it all by hand, which we find is very common uh, out in the world these days. People that they have a, a closet full of direct mail things, eBooks, cups, whatever it might be, you know, Yetis and these sales reps are using their valuable time to go into the closet, get the product, package it up, you know, label it, ship it out. That's valuable time that your sales reps could be doing the most valuable thing that they could do for your company. And that's sell. They're, they're not your, they're not there to kit and sip out products. They're so <laughs> there to sell your product. So when you start integrating this stuff into a direct mail uh, product and working with a company like PFL here, PFL, we do all that for you. We source the product. We house it here in, in Livingston, Montana. We kit it, we package it, we, we ship it out. And we provide the tracking for you as well because we've backed into the FedEx API and because of the integration into your CRM and the map, you know, within 15 minutes of when that package hits someone's desk that you can make a timely follow-up. Right. And speaking of that integration, flow right into that, um, you know, or orchestrating direct mail with other channels is, is a core driver of success. It's kind of that, you know, force multiplier effect, you know, and without a strong integration, 
I think effective orchestration is almost impossible to achieve. So you really need a, a strong integration and in making the most use of your marketing automation platforms. It's always funny to me when I talk to somebody who's using a product like Marketo and there's, they're just using it to send out emails. I'm like, oh my gosh, you've got so much more you could be doing right now. You know, that's pretty common, I think. So, you know, in, in this report, we're talking about, uh, you know, tight tech integrations in the multi-channel report. You know, 63% of marketers reported that a very good ROI uh, was reported when their direct mail integration to their marketing technology was high to complete. Meaning that it was actually, you know, they were utilizing their marketing automation platform to its full capacity. You know, see here a tight tech integration increases the likelihood of strong direct mail ROIs by 63%. I mean, for as a marketer and you're asking, you're getting asked, what's the ROI of this? What's the ROI of this? Like we can actually prove that, you know, you get strong direct mail ROIs upwards of 63% when you actually utilize the platforms that you're paying for. Yeah, it's uh, that that always drives me crazy. I used to own an agency uh, and where we would work with lots of B2B companies and it was always shocking to me to go in and see, you know, they're paying all of this money for Marketo or HubSpot or Pardot or whatever. Uh, and they're just sending, you know, weekly newsletters or, you know, stuff like that out. And, you know, it's like, you guys are paying through the nose for this and not using <laughs> anywhere close to what you can out of it. Um, you know, I think it also speaks to one of the big challenges we've had on the marketing side is, you know, I talked about the proliferation of these technologies. If you don't have them tightly integrated, then you wind up with a lot of silos. And so it makes it really hard to figure out what's going on, uh, get up to date information on it, not get your wires crossed. You know, we can talk about some of that, you know, in our uh, you know, horror story section. But uh, if you don't know what's going on and you continue to send stuff out, you know, automated or, you know, inappropriate for where they are at that stage, then, you know, like I talked about with, you know, sending the wrong content to the right people or to the wrong people, um, you know, it makes you look bad, makes you look like you don't know what you're doing. 100%. And then everyone gets, just gets a bad taste for, for direct. And you, you're trying another campaign out, you know, for, you know, a year or two down the road. So if you want to get your wins, you know, set it up correctly in the beginning. Cool. So yeah, talk to us a little bit about how you did this with Paycor. Yeah, so they're they're one of our, our top customers, really fun to work with. They do a lot of great campaigns. And this is just really an excellent example of what we're talking about with multi-channel orchestration. Right. They they're one of the companies that move from large batch and blast sense to serving, you know, relevant multi-channel marketing campaigns and content based on prospect behavior. So what they did is they took it at the top of the funnel, right? They sent an email newsletter. Pretty common to start off there that, that feeds kind of topic and pain point specific nurture streams. All right, so when the contact from there engaged with that content, uh, with a specific topic in the newsletter, whatever it might be, they added the, the, that prospect, customer, whatever was added to a relevant nurture stream that includes emails, targeted ads, and a direct mail piece that includes a wine key. So you got your little wine piece there. I actually have that same one on my desk. So it's, it's a real piece here. <laughs> you never know when you're going to need a good wine key. Uh, it a, and it included, included a personalized note specific to the topic that they were engaging with. And, and then a content guide that speaks to the topic and shared additional topics uh, in case that prospect had additional interest in, in that topic. So they really served them up with, you know, a good little piece, but the piece wasn't the real the real meat of the puzzle, right? It was the content they were serving up and serve and answering the questions that they had. So this, the call to action on the mailer was to book a meeting so they could learn more about how Paycor can help them. All right, they also mentioned uh, the added bonus of getting a bottle of wine to go with the wine key as a reward. So uh, if you if you I don't know if you can read on there, but if you take a take a meeting, a lot of these campaigns are you know take a meeting, get this. So they they did the added bonus of we'll send you a bottle of wine after the meeting that goes with the wine key as a reward for, you know, quote unquote, unlocking the true power of HR with, with Paycor. So they kind of had a theme, you know, unlocking and opening. And when the package delivered, uh, an automated follow-up goes out and the sales rep gets a task in Salesforce to follow up saying, Hey, package has been delivered to Debbie. You should follow up with Debbie now because she has the package on her desk. And it's a lot easier to call someone, when you have, you know, have sent them a gift instead of saying, hey, you know, Debbie, I'd love to tell you about our software. You know, hey, Debbie, did you get the, the wine opener that we sent you in, in the box? Oh, yeah, it was great. You know, good, good chance to, to warm up your, your leads before you call them. And each element of this campaign or this program you know, is automated and it worked together to, to really 
drive and deliver that message and help them book meetings. You know, and they also have a, a base kit that spans six topic streams, right? So they, they really dove deep into their content. As you, as you were mentioning, content is king. They are, they are excellent at their content creation. So they wanted to, to make the most use in shipping this out to people. You know, with, with this strategy, with what Paycor is working on here, uh, they saw, let's, uh, let me remember, they, they, they saw an, like a, almost a 2,000% increase in response rates and a 78% increase in conversion rates and a 40% increase in new bookings, All right? Along with that, they had a 5X ROI for direct mail portion with a 13% conversion rate. Wait, you're, again, you're, you're, you're telling me free booze motivates people? <laughs> I mean... You know, if you ship me some something like those along those lines, you're going to get a response rate. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, we also did a, a play like this a long time ago with whiskey, and that was that was speaking my language. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they were they were motivated by the wine, I guess. Cool. All right. Uh, so yeah, real quick, we'll touch on data and the the role that it plays in it because you know all of this is great, but if you're not able to target the right people. Um, and be able to get this out to them, then then all of this is really for naught. Um, so you know, if you're killing it with content and and you're creating really good, really solid content that speaks to your decision makers at the right companies, so you know it's targeted based off of role, title, pain points, you know, <laughs> industry, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, then you've you've got to be able to target that content. Sorry. Uh, you've got to be able to target that content at the right people and and get that in front of them. Um, um, you know, as we've talked about, uh, direct mail carries actual direct cost with it. So you really want to make sure you're getting the the right mail to the right people at the right places, uh, and make sure it's actually landing at their desk. One of the challenges with this, of course, though, is uh, most of the data that's available out there is going to point people as far as a physical address to the home office or the headquarters. Um, obviously, you know, a lot of people are working in remote offices. You've got more and more remote working teams, stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, it becomes a challenge trying to get direct mail to the right people at the right location. Um, yeah, you know, it's one of the things that's really exciting with us is just a few weeks ago, we rolled out, uh, you know, direct location uh, search. So, you know, if you're looking for a specific person, a specific company, uh, many times we're going to have that actual direct address for them. Uh, so for those instances where people are working at a remote office or you're know, working at a satellite office or something like that, um, when you're trying to do a direct mail campaign, you want that to go to where they are, not to the headquarters of the home office where, you know, uh, best case scenario gets forwarded onto them. Worst case scenario, it never gets in front of them. They don't even know that you sent anything. Yep. Uh, how do you guys tackle some of that on the data front at PFL? Everything you mentioned is a weekly conversation that we have. Um, it is your know, data is the number one, you know, ob or hurdle, obstacle, whatever you want to call it, for most of our customers to get over. And you know, and we work with a lot of great partners like yourself uh, through our professional services team to help uh, our our customers and prospects verify their data, make sure that it's accurate, make sure that we know where this piece is going. You know, and, and the last piece you just talked about, that direct location search, that product is is going to be a lifesaver for for us, right? Because we our customers can come in, they'll bring us their data, right? We're not supplying, you know, the data, they bring us theirs. We help them verify and append it and do all the work, you know, but oftentimes that you're right, they do have the home office address. So it goes to, you know, maybe 3M in Minneapolis, but they've got people all over the world, right? Yep. So how do you exactly know how they reach Carlos at the other office in Minneapolis instead of the headquarter address, right? So PFL, we have a professional services team and we work with a lot of different partners, which is, what what I do here at BFL, I manage all of our partnerships and with our tech partners and agencies to to make sure we're providing the best solutions for our customers. Cool. All right, so yeah, well uh, we're getting close to the end. Let's uh, let's get through a couple of case studies here real quick, so we've got time to share uh, you know a couple of our war stories, and then we'll uh, we'll open it up for Q and A. Good stuff. Yeah, this is uh, this is 
this is one of my more fun campaigns that we've done. Uh, AM, I, I, love, I love drones. I recently crashed mine on the side of my car and it broke. So a little sad about the drone world right now. So anyway, Cloudera, their, their challenges, two at the top here, low response rates of digital outreach and decreased costs of direct mail and improve ROI. So they're, they're already doing direct mail, trying to decrease those costs. You know, so they were combining you know, with a combination of some outbound messaging, some digital display advertising and account-based webinars and trade shows. They were look, looking to incorporate an intelligent direct mail effort but, you know, they came to us on, on where to start. Uh, so this was going to their first ever campaign, keep in mind. You know, so they did this, uh, this little drawn piece here. Again, it was a uh, take a meeting, get this. So I believe we sent the, the, the drone out with a with an ask or call to action of, hey, you know, set up this, you know, 30 minute demo, hour demo, whatever. And we'll send you the remote to go along with this drone. <laughs> you know, since we're running short on time, we'll just get, get to the meat of it with the results. Uh, and for their, for their initial test pilot run, I'd say they were quite successful. They nailed their goal with a $3 million in generated pipeline, which, which was an uh, 8X on, their, on the ROI. So a 37X pipeline ROI and closed uh, roughly 700,000 in new deals. So their first direct mail campaign was a tremendous success. And we worked with them on, you know, sourcing, kidding, branding, and, and just getting everything set up so that it could, you know, shoot out as successful as possible for them. That's great. Uh, and then, yeah, real quick, we'll talk about uh, eBuilder on our side. So love to, to highlight this use case because, uh, you know, we talked about direct location uh, being available in our data. The other thing that we have is uh, that we offer is research on demand. And so what research on demand is, is you can come to us with a list of your target accounts or we'll even help you to identify uh, your ideal customer profile. Uh, and so, you know, like anybody, our, you know, our database is going to have gaps. There is people that may not necessarily be covered um, in two, two ways that plays out. One, we have a enormous database of machine process data on the back end that's not gone through our human verification process. So anybody that, that's an account out of that machine process pool um, that's a target for you, we can go and prioritize that for our research team to go run through the, the actual hand verification process, which is how we get our data to over 95% accurate. Um, the other is we could actually task that research team to go out and find the data for those uh, ideal customers that you're looking for. Um, so having a data partner that has that sort of white glove a la carte service means that, you know, if you're somebody like eBuilder, uh, you've got a real niche target that you're going after um, that may not be covered or covered as well as you need out of, you know, kind of more standard data providers. Uh, we offer a, a white glove service to be able to go out and find you that data that you need to be able to execute on campaigns like we're talking about. All right, uh, let's hear some of uh, some of your top stories, Jason. These should be interesting. <laughs> on the uh, on the, the fail side, are we, are we looking at that sure. aspect? Okay, um, sure. So I, I think I mentioned earlier, you know, it's it's about it's all about the data, right? And it's you know it's nothing epic or extraordinary, but there's been quite a few times where, you know, in the beginning of, of people's campaigns, their, their data templates are just all wrong and maybe jacked up and they come in and, you know, we've, we've had a few instances where people provide the data. Of course, they verify that it's accurate, say it is, but what happened in one instance was that everyone, they were, they were sending a campaign out to, it was supposed to go to all new prospects. So they were running this campaign to all new prospects in their, in their funnel but they ended up sending everything to current customers. They mm -hmm. jacked up some data templates. So you can only imagine, you know, people getting these, these new campaigns, maybe some deals, maybe some discounts and, you know, kind of how that affected, you know, overall sales and renewals and wanting to, to get, you know, new prospect pricing type situation stuff. So it's really important to have those, those, all your data, you know, <laughs> lined up perfectly. And there's been a few times as well where, you know, we've seen uh, campaigns go out to, you know, everything gets sent to the person with the same name. So it's, you know, <laughs> everyone's adjacent because somewhere along the line, some, some data was messed up, you know, and it wasn't, you know, completely accurate, right? Or some sort of template was, was jacked. And there's a couple other fun ones as well. Like, I think one of the, one of the funniest ones to me is, uh, I was, I was talking to one of my partners. He was with another company where he was on the receiving end of a campaign. And one of our customers thought it'd be fun to send out some honey. Right. So they, you know, anytime you send a, 
you know, a, a, a food product and <laughs> couple, combine that with a glass casing that it goes in, you're asking for disaster. So I remember he was telling me he got, he got, had received this desk and he didn't really know what it was or who it was from. And he had received it, noticed that it was kind of, you know, you can tell when something maybe is like oily or wet on the outside. It's like, oh, it looks like something may be in there is broken. And he went to pick it up and it was stuck to his desk. Oh God. <laughs> the honey, the, the glass jar had busted and honey had went everywhere and leaked the box and therefore had just stuck to his desk. And <laughs> it's like, okay, we don't, probably don't need to send anything in glass boxes or glass products anymore. That was proper casing, especially when it comes to a food product. Yeah, I love I love the food product one because that that that's hands down my favorite. Uh, it, it was it was both a win and a epic fail. Um, so one one year, so we're we're out of Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, which is home to uh, to Benton's Bacon, which is you know world famous bacon that you know Michelin mm -hmm. chefs and stuff use. Uh, so one year we decided for uh, Christmas we were going to send out uh, Benton's Bacon to all of our partners and top customers uh, <laughs> with a campaign, you know, bring home the bacon for you know the new year. Um, and for a lot of people, it was a huge success. Like they just absolutely loved it. Like literally, literally ate it up, um, you know, sending us messages on Twitter and stuff like pictures of them cooking it up and stuff like that. Uh, we did have a few and this highlights, the importance of having the right address. We did have a few that landed in, in the wrong place and literally sat on a desk for a long time, mm. um, which, you know, bacon is cured, but it's going to last forever. Right. Uh, but my, my favorite was we had a partner that was 100% remote for his team. Uh, so they had, they had a quote unquote home office, but it was really just where everything got mailed to and nobody was actually there uh, except for the CEO. So we sent out Benton's bacon to all of the employees, which meant it all went to the headquarters where none of them were uh, except for the CEO who happened to be Jewish. So we oh sent bacon to a Jewish CEO <laughs> for his entire team. Um, fortunately, he had a good sense of humor about it. But uh, yeah, that was that was definitely our biggest fail out of that campaign. Yeah, I've, I've heard of a few campaigns kind of go awry like that as well. You know, so it's really <laughs> about also knowing your audience. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Food, food is a tricky one. It doesn't always work out. We, remember, we had one that was that was it was cookies. I think the the customer had sourced the cookies himself uh and they were shipped into us and we shipped them out and by the time the cookies had got to proper based cookie they were just it just crumbled so bad in the packaging that they got there it was just like powdered cookie <laughs> food's always a tough one yeah it is it is all right well uh we've already run over a few minutes i want to try and uh, for anybody hanging around make sure that we've got some time for the q a i've seen a few of them roll through already um Jason, Heidi asked, uh, would this work well for a B2B to C uh, campaign sending product samples? Um, you know, how would that work with you guys? Yeah, we do quite a bit of that. Uh, the product sample uh, situation, one of our, you know, bigger customers is, is in the, the healthcare space and they're, they ship out a lot of um, sample requests. So some of their, their customers would go to their website, request a product sample and, you know, that that when that form is filled out, it, it's triggered here at PFL at our warehouse and they go, you know, get the product, package it, kit it, ship it out on their behalf. So it's, it's something that we definitely do a lot of work with as well. Um, I'll speak to that to, to the C part as well. We do one of our top customers at PFL is a B to C customer uh, and they're shipping out, you know, so it's one of those oil change places. If you ever have ever gotten your oil change and you get a flyer that says, Hey, it's, you know, almost time to get an oil change coming for 25% off. We're triggering that for, for that customer as well. And that's shipping out to all of their prior customers in their database. So, you know, we can definitely work with the B2B to C as well as the, the B2C. Right. Uh, and then similar to that, uh, we had a question about the, the metrics around effectiveness of, of these campaigns. Uh, was that specific to B to B, or is that that going to hold uh, relatively steady, you know, for B to C as well? You know, I, I'm. I would say that report is primarily going to be based off B to B, but with the results that we're seeing with some of our B to C customers, I'm going to say it's going to hold pretty true as well, right? Because of of just the sheer 
you know, response rates we see from getting a package or an envelope or something, you know, from FedEx directly. Cool. And then along the same lines, uh, do they, are the, the metrics that you're looking at, uh, are those for net new or, or overall? That's a good question. Um, I, I would imagine overall, so we, we, you know, it's, we do a lot of retention work as well with our, with our customers. So they'll come in like Cloud Arrow, come in and create a new campaign. It'll be success, successful. Then they'll also start working on, you know, re retention of current customers and renewals and, and so forth. All right. And then uh, we've got one more. Uh, are there, are there differences between uh, effectiveness of, you know, kind of more, uh, you know, 2D paper type direct mailers versus uh, 3D stuff like the uh, uh, the drone? Yeah, for sure. I, I don't have actual numbers on those, to be honest with you, but I can I can tell you that there are going to be some significant differences, you know, in the sense that if you were just to send me a, you know, a flyer in the mail versus sending me a box, I'm going to be more likely to, to disregard the flyer if it's not relevant to, to me and my intention to buy your product uh, versus you sending me a box with a drone in it that says I'm going to get a free drone if I call you up and get it to do a demo and I'll get the remote. Uh, so you're going to be, I think it's, it's going to be significantly higher as far as response rates and conversion rates when you're sending 3d products, which is, you know, why we strategically work with FedEx to, to send every, we send everything that we can in a, either a FedEx box or a FedEx envelope. And you know, that, that in turn is what, you know, contributes to some of the real cost. Yeah. And I think another key to it, uh, you know, especially for the type of campaigns we've been talking about is to make sure that you're doing something that's, that's truly value add. Um, and you know, obviously, the more that you do that, um, you know, for that that type of campaign where you're trying to get engagement, get a conversation going, stuff like that, um, then it's always yeah, you know, whether it's content you know sent digitally or or through direct mail, um, you know, you're going to get the best engagement, the best results by focusing on stuff that truly is value add for them. Exactly, and I mean that's that's my big piece as well. It's all about the value. So, mail. One of the stats we saw is that people feel about fifty-seven percent more valued when they receive mail. I like guess it's the whole adage of your your name being on something, and if you can couple that with actually providing value with that piece, and I think you've won with your marketing campaign. Yep. And then uh, we've got one more uh, asking. Uh, campaign examples seem to be high-end product sales. Do you have any thoughts for a more mass mailing, like twenty-five to fifty thousand? Um, and yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, we, we, your side of it, but I, I, you know, for, for me and my experience is, you know, you don't have to be super high, uh, high price to be able to make something like this effective, especially whenever you have the lifts that we're talking about for engagement and, uh, and response rates. Right. hundred percent. And again, it's all about knowing your audience and, and their intent to buy your product and what you're serving up. We can do anything from, you know, one to one to one to a hundred thousand, you know, piece. We've got customers who are sending out, you know, that those numbers are 25,000 to 50,000 pieces of, you know, on, in their campaign. So, you know, it's same success. You just make sure the, the, like you said, content is king. Is, is it relevant to who you're serving this to? Uh, and do you know their intent? Do you understand their, their buying habits? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the key to all of this is, you know, know, know your audience and then be able to have, have the data and the ability to, to connect with and get in front of that audience. Correct. All right. Well, yeah, we're about 10 minutes over here. Uh, looks like that was all of the questions we had in there. Um, you know, give it one quick last second. If anybody has one that they're, they're dying to get in there. Um, otherwise, we'll go ahead and wrap this. Uh, Jason, this has been fantastic. It's been great to have you on with us. Yeah, for sure. It's been a lot of fun. I appreciate you, you having us here hanging out with you guys. Awesome.